Welcome to the first video for Fallout 76 weapon guides. These are not related to my weapon lore videos I do in my secondary channel, Wasteland Weaponistics. That is linked in the description. The lever action rifle is a manually operated rifle in Fallout 76. It is versatile enough to be used at any range. It holds 5 rounds of 45 ammo, has a standard fire rate of 5, firing type is manually operated, Reload speed varies since each round is inserted one at a time, but a completely empty magazine reload is between 2 and 3 seconds. Onto the attachments. The receivers. There's three ones I can recommend. Hardened, Tuned, Severe. Hardened if you want just a straight damage increase and nothing else. Tuned for not as much of a damage increase. You still get a damage increase from it, but a slightly improved rate of fire. And the severe receiver for a slight damage increase as well, but you also get critical shot damage. There is also the prime receiver if you feel like farming ultra set ammo. For the barrels, any of the long barrels. Long barrels give more range. More range is better damage because Fallout 76 has a very high damage drop off if you're shooting outside the range of your gun. For stocks, any stock that increases accuracy. The less recoil doesn't really matter that much since it's manually operated and the rifle has to reset after every shot. For the sights, whatever floats your boat really. Personally, I hate scopes, so I don't use them. I tend to just stick with the standard iron sights. I find that they're extremely easy to use. I mean, it's a ghost ring with a post. There is also the reflex sight if you don't like the irons or the scopes. If you like the scopes, then use whatever is your preference. For the muzzle, either use nothing or the suppressor. Oh, like I said, recoil reduction on manually operated rifles is pointless because it has to reset after every shot. Plus a muzzle brake or a compensator reduces your range. Less range, less damage. Unless you're running a stealth build, then use the suppressor. So here's the recoil with and without a compensator. As you can see, it's kind of negligible, even with my lever action that has a 25% faster rate of fire. Onto the perk cards. I can only say what perk cards are my choice, as everyone uses a different build. If you use a stealth sniper build, a bloodied build, a junkies build, or a crit spam build, any of the other builds out there, you know, your perk cards are going to be different. But these are just some that I think are good for almost any build. Now I might mention some that might be good for one build but not for another. So, in strength. There isn't th that much that directly improves the rifle in strength, but there is some side improvements. And by side improvements I mean they're affecting a part of the rifle, but they're not a direct improvement. One example is Bandolier. Bandolier lets you carry more ammo by making it lighter. See, it's not affecting the rifle, it's affecting the ammo that the rifle uses. So you're able to hold more ammo with a bandolier. There is also strong back, which improves your carry capacity, allowing you to carry more ammo, as well as other things. And perception. This is where most of your weapon buffs are going to come from. Like all three cards of riflemen. Rifleman, expert rifleman, master rifleman. You'll need all three of these. There is also Tank Killer for going through enemy armor, Long Shot for better accuracy when aimed, Glow Sighted for increased damage against glowing enemies, Sniper if you are going to use a scope is pretty good, there is also Concentrated Fire if you are using the gun in vats a lot. Now for Endurance. Endurance like Strength isn't really going to directly buff the lever action, however it does have some side buffs. There is Revenant. Revenant is a strange perk that it that greatly increases your damage for a few seconds after you've been revived. There is also Radical if you run a bloodied build, as Radical will increase your strength, allowing you to carry more ammo. Charisma. Charisma has some cards that will buff the lever action. Tenderizer, obviously. Tenderizer makes it so follow-up shots do more damage. It's not a very big damage increase, but a damage increase is a damage increase. There is also Strange in Numbers, which will improve your mutations if you are in a group. Intelligence. 
Intelligence doesn't really have much that will really buff the damage on a lever action. However, there is Gunsmith. Gunsmith will make it so the weapon degrades slower, as well as giving you access to higher level um, attachments. And then there's Weapon Artisan. Weapon Artisan will let you repair your weapon to over 100% durability. Agility. Agility has a high number of buffs for the lever action if you're going to run a stealth build. However, for those people who don't use stealth builds like me, there is some perks and agility that will help out the lever action. There's adrenaline, which will improve your damage after each kill. Another one is gun foo, which swaps your target in vats after every kill. However, whenever it swaps targets, it will buff the damage of your next shot. Combined with adrenaline, this is extremely powerful. Luck. Luck also has some buffs for the lever action. Bloodied Mass is an obvious one as it buffs every weapon and it makes enemies explode into a crazy gory mess. Better Criticals is also good. Really any of the critical perk cards are good if you're going to do a critical spam build. Tormentor, also a good card. Uh, makes your rifles break limbs and stagger I believe. Why this rifle perk is not in perception I don't know. Quick Hands is one that you might want to look at. Now don't rely on Quick Hands because it's something that happens randomly. Luck of the Draw is a good card if you don't want to have to repair your weapon as much. Like Quick Hands, it does not activate all the time, it is a random chance. Next section is what legendary effects should you be looking for on a lever action rifle. Now I'm going to divide each primary legendary effect into four categories. I'm not going to go into second and thirty airy uh, legendary effects. So we have A class, B class, C class, and D class. A class are the best le primary legendary effects. B class are still good, but I think need a secondary effect to make them really good. C class are mediocre and could be better, or too situational to be considered good. And then there's D class. D class are what I call the useless ones. A class, instigating, executioners, anti-armor, two-shot, bloodied, Berserkers and Junkies. These all increase damage on the gun and only get better with second and third effects. Instigating is double damage on if the target has full health. Executioners is make it 50% more damage under 40% health, I believe, or maybe it's the other way around. Anti-armor. Go through enemies armor easier. Really good when combined with tank killer. Two shot. You shoot an additional projectile for additional damage. Basically, a duplex round. Bloody. Lower your health, the more damage your weapon does. Berserkers. Lower your damage resistance, the more damage your weapon does. And Junkies. The more addictions you have, the more damage your weapon does. As you can see, these all increase damage, and they're all pretty good and only get better with a secondary effect. B-Class. Vampires. Double. Quad. Furious, Medics, Mutants. Each of these can be good, but they need a secondary effect to make them really good. So, Vampires and Furious both need fire rate to, in order to make them good. Vampires because that gives you more of a chance to activate the healing factor. And Furious is in B-Class because it needs 9 shots in order to get the full damage buff. 9 shots out of this weapon is 2 full reloads. There is not much in the game that will survive 9 shots, more than 9 shots from this lever action, fully spec'd out. There are a few exceptions, obviously high health targets, but most things won't survive 9 shots. For double and quad, they're down in B class and not A class because on the lever action, sure you get more ammo in the magazine, so that's technically more DPS if you think about it. However, you're going to be spending more time reloading than you are shooting with quad or double on this weapon. Simply because the way that it works is it's not the same reload animation where it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it will reload 20. No, you have to do... He has to put 20 rounds into the thing because of how the reload system works. So you're, you're going to be spending more time reloading than you are shooting. Now you can sort of alleviate this with any of the reload speed buffs and quick hands is going to come in a very handy with a quad 
but I just don't feel that they're A class material on the lever action. Then for medics, medics it would be really good for a critical build, for a crit spam if you're in a group. Because medics outside of a group is useless compared to vampire. And then there's mutants. If it was 10% per mutation, it would be an A class. But since it's 10 only 10%, it really needs explosive or 10% damage while aiming to make it good. C-class. Zealots, ghoul slayers, mutant slayers, exterminators, troubleshooters, hunters. All of the 30% more damage to a specific enemy type is so mediocre and bleh. I mean, yeah, 30% more damage is nothing to scoff at. However... Some of those only deal with one particular enemy. Still too situational for me to be con for them to be considered good. Because you can get more than 30% damage with any of the A class ones. Even with the secondary effect, I don't think they're that good. Unless you're just using like a, a ghoul slayer's lever action for the white springs or the burrows. Now for D class or the worthless ones. Assassins, suppressors, stalkers, no, and Nocturnal. Assassins is 10% more damage to players. 10% and only to players. See, at least with mutants, it's 10% to everything. It just buffs the weapon. 10% to players on a weapon is so useless. Suppressors. There's a perk card for this, and it should not be a primary effect. This suppressor should really be a secondary. Stalkers. Also extremely worthless and should not be a primary effect. This needs to be a secondary effect or something. It's just not worth it. 100% VATS accurate accuracy outside of combat is not worth anything. Like, oh good, my first shot will be accurate. And then there's Nocturnals. Some of you might think, why is Nocturnals down here? Doesn't it buff the damage like Bloodied or Junkies? Yeah, it does. However, it's so, so situational and so bad that I consider it useless simply because it's only activated at night and this isn't just oh it's 9 p.m. or whenever night activates here's 50% more damage no it's it's a gradual increase as night goes meaning that the more into night it gets the higher the damage goes and to a max which means that for 90% of the day a weapon with this is useless and you have such a limited window to get the max damage that it isn't worth using you know I'd also rate nocturnals higher if it didn't reduce your damage so on to mutations that will help the uh, lever action out eagle eyes more critical damage good for really any build especially a crit spam build adrenal reaction for you bloodied builds obviously that's improved damage at lower health. Goes perfectly great with bloodied builds. Uh, there's also Speed Demon. Will give you faster run time and faster reloads. Very good with this weapon because you have to insert every round one at a time. Now we move on to consumables. Some of you might be going, ugh, food builds. But remember, a food build did one-shot the Scorch Beast Queen. So, you know, don't laugh at food builds too much. So here's some foods that will buff the lever action. Mega Sloth Mushroom sh Soup and Blight Soup will both improve critical damage for a limited time. For the alcohol. Ballistic Block will increase ballistic damage for 15% for a limited time, but you also have higher weapon degradation. Hoppy Hunter IPA will give you bonus damage to all animals for a limited time. Basically the hunter's leg legendary effect in a bottle drugs that improve damage psycho psycho buff and overdrive uh, There's also bobbleheads and magazines. So overall the lever action is a very good weapon It can easily be used in the end game by a variety of rifleman builds You know whether you're a stealth sniper a, a bloodied build a crit spam, you know anything. It's a truly versatile weapon so I give this weapon a 4 out of 5, and not a 5 out of 5. One, because it's a little slow to load, and two, because you can't change it off of 45. I think being able to change it to, like, another round that's more powerful 
Alright, that'll be it. See everybody whenever I decide to do another one of these. Next time.